beginning that process. Bowser trained Hogan in the ministry and about the dynamics of preaching. Bowser had Hogan memorize whole chapters of the Bible. When Hogan was just 13 years of age, she began to preach. The people in the audience, because they were so young, snickered uh, at this little young whippersnapper. <laughs> Yet, uh, this young man, after giving that 10 minutes talk, uh, has become our laws, uh, one of the greatest gospel preachers in the world. The men have claimed him as being one of the greatest among us. And certainly, uh, he uh, stood the test of time in his teaching and his ministry. The people in the audience may have snickered, but they didn't realize that the boy one day would be such an effective person in the, in the brotherhood. Preacher, we find, can certainly be linked to Dr. Holman. He was the preacher's preacher. And often, like G.P. Bowser, he would be reading from his hand, and G.P. Bowser would read from his hand if the Bible were there, and he had such command of the scripture <laughs> and memory. Uh, he read, and said, Brother Holman, I, I see him doing it uh, as well. And then some of our young men coming on are fascinated with that. I um, want to mention that from his early start, Hogan embarked on a distinguished and illustrious career in a preaching that spanned over 70 years. He was uh, 95 when he passed. Now, the average now go up, and I, I see him periodically when he's bedridden. But one thing for sure, he may have lost his agility and mobility physically, but he never lost that memory. <laughs> That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. And we can ask about script and he just saw a quote yeah. <laughs> And so that was fascinating. And, uh, and Dr. Uh, Dr. Holy Moss was a very personal person and I attended Pepperdine University and uh, where uh, in Los Angeles, of course, the big work took us there. And so, I, I, my membership was there, and, and every time he got up, I took very, very strict notes. And those helped me tremendously, even as I, I'd gone to Southwestern, then Pepperdine. And so, um, uh, he's very encouraging, because I didn't know how I was going to make it, so I said, okay, brothers, I will pay your way on the bus. So I, I'll, I'll take an Abrahamic clean, clean. And whatever God wants to make of me and do with me, uh, then I'll let him do it. And so, uh, and notice Hogan traveled from coast to coast, preaching to small gatherings, wherever he could pitch his tent, converting thousands to Jesus Christ. In 1930, many of us were not born then. Hogan settled for a brief time in the Windy City, right where we are now. He settled here, and then uh, he worked with Brother Levi Kennedy, you remember him though, yep. uh, in uh, really building up a stone congregation in the area. Brother Hogan established a school for preachers, which has trained, which has trained many of today's families, and most are respected evangelists. Brother Hogan first went to Los Angeles uh, and he was serving the Wilmington Avenue Church of Christ. A year later, he returned to Los Angeles and established yet another church in a storefront at 48th Street and Compton. From these humble beginnings, the congregation expanded until it was necessary to relocate to a beautiful new facility on 57th and Figueroa yep. for the Lord. And this was the beginning of the bigger role of church attack. How many of you heard the bigger role of church attack? Yeah. And uh, during its heyday, it was one of the largest congregations in America among us. Brother Hogan was also responsible for establishing the Los Angeles schools of preaching in 
ministered by the Big Red Church. Following the tradition set by mentor G.P. Bowser, Brother, Ho Brother Hogan continued to serve as editor and publisher of the Christian Anchor. He enjoyed by the leadership of several thousand uh, people until his death. In, in traveling with Bowser, Hogan saw firsthand the hard work it took to start a Christian school. But he also saw the first hand, that first hand reward of the fruits of having a preaching school. As I said on last evening, every school that is closed uh, since the early time under the thousand others and tribes, they were never resurrected. That's why I think it's so important that we that we hold what we have and not let it slip and not let it go down because it's harder to start something up than to keep it going. <laughs> Dr. Hogan was a great man and he had a very wonderful wife that supported him in every way. And I want to say to you concerning R.M. Hogan, this is a personal experience and as well known as he was, Respected as it was, when I became dean of Southwestern Christian College, before I became vice president, but uh, <coughs> Hogan become from Lester Shipman, and he saw me with some socks. Uh, he said, "Son, where you get those socks?" Because he was a dresser. I tell you, I mean, he was really, he was sharp all the time. Where did you get those socks? I said, "I said, do you like them?" He said, "Yeah." And then every time you come to lecture, I have uh, some socks for it. <laughs> <laughs> and that seems to delight him so much. Something that little. And he was very humble person. And I enjoyed being around him. He helped me a lot. Uh, in LA, I was poor as a, as a thing you can think. <laughs> <laughs> but God helped me. Right. Uh, and so, in closing, this is quote from Clarence Francis. You can buy a man's time. You can buy his physical presence at a given place. You can even buy a measured number of a skilled muscle motions for hours. But you cannot buy enthusiasm. You can't buy royalty, and you cannot buy devotion of heart. Therefore, Brother Hogan possessed all these qualities. And I believe that if he were here tonight, he would say, let's help this school the way, let's help Southwestern Christian College. And so I leave you with Let's help Southwestern Christian All right. Let's thank the Dr. Maxwell and servant, Dr. R.A. Hogan, worthy of recognition and remembrance as one who has helped pave the path for us to be here on tonight. Dr. Carl Backus will not be here tonight. I'm the oldest one is ophthalmologist after eye surgery. He's still in Los Angeles. We solicit prayers on his behalf. And uh, we remember him in the closing benediction tonight. But we do have two powerful, talented, provocative speakers remaining. Sandwiched between those two speakers will be a very, very special presentation that you don't want to miss. Our first speaker tonight will be a remaining speaker, Jack Evans Jr. of Terrell, Texas. Side of subject is when sorrow is turned to joy. Yeah. We just can't wait to hear what Brother Jack Evans will do tonight. One of our song leaders will come and lead us in a verse or two of the song. We should hear from Jack Evans. I feel good, 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 good. Said I feel good, oh yes, my Lord. Because there's something about the spirit of Jesus that makes me feel good, good, good. Said I feel good, 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 good. Oh, I feel good, oh yes, my Lord. We 
Joy, joy, say 